Respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV, is a common virus similar to those that cause the common cold and flu that can infect the nose, throat or the lungs. RSV can cause symptoms such as a runny nose, a sore throat, cough or difficulty breathing. While older children or adults can have a runny nose or a sore throat for a day or two, younger children, particularly those less than six months of age, can develop serious complications such as pneumonia or bronchiolitis, which is an infection of the small airways of the lung. Each year, globally, RSV is estimated to cause more than 200,000 deaths. 99% of these are in developing countries. RSV is one of the most common reasons that babies are admitted to hospital when they either have difficulty feeding or they require oxygen. Currently, there is no licensed vaccine to prevent RSV infection. Antibiotics aren't useful for treating RSV infection, although some new treatments are being developed. In Australia, RSV is responsible for a quarter of all admissions of children under six months of age, generally between May and October, when RSV infections are most common. In addition, there is some evidence that the number of babies being admitted to hospital with RSV infection is increasing. In Perth, Western Australia, over the last two years, there have been more than 800 laboratory confirmed cases of RSV each year. Also, some experts believe that preventing RSV infections in babies will reduce their risk of developing asthma in later childhood. Vaccination is one of the most effective ways of reducing the risk of infection and its complications. When you receive a vaccine, the body makes proteins called antibodies, which protects you if you're exposed to the virus or the bacteria that cause the infection in the future. In the first few months of life, babies are protected by antibodies that are transferred from their mother during the pregnancy. Influenza and whooping cough vaccine are now routinely recommended during pregnancy and have been shown to be a very effective and safe way of protecting babies from these serious infections. Without maternal antibodies from vaccination, babies can be exposed to influenza or whooping cough in the community and not be protected, as these vaccines can't be given from six weeks of age for whooping cough and six months of age for influenza. Vaccines given during pregnancy work by increasing the level of antibodies in the mother that are then transferred through the placenta to the baby and protecting them in the first few months of life after they're born. We're looking for pregnant women to help with an important study, investigating how to protect newborn babies from getting RSV disease. Researchers hope that by giving an RSV vaccine to mothers during pregnancy, it will protect babies from getting infections in the first few months of life in a similar way to whooping cough and influenza vaccines that are now given routinely during pregnancy. This is an international study involving 80 study sites in 11 countries, including six in Australia. Currently in its third year, over 3,000 women have already been enrolled so far. This study will enrol up to 8,500 healthy pregnant women during the third trimester, whose ages are between 18 to 40 years, and whose babies will be born during the winter months when RSV infections are most common. Novavax, the study sponsor, has tested the safety of this vaccine in nine complete or ongoing studies in over 2,000 people. Safety data have been analysed in people of all ages, young children, healthy adults and pregnant women. To date, the RSV vaccine has been well tolerated and importantly, there have been no safety concerns in pregnant mums or their babies. If found to be effective, the RSV vaccine has the potential to significantly impact on babies' health and reduce the worldwide incidence of this important cause of babies being admitted to hospital. Edward was three months old. He was fine on a Friday morning and then all of a sudden had a really bad cough and was really irritable. I couldn't get into my GP um, and something just made me take him to hospital. I trusted my instinct, it was the right thing to do. Whilst I thought I was being overly cautious and a bit paranoid, it quickly became clear that Edward was quite unwell. The nurses placed us in one of the priority emergency beds and then we were moved up to an isolated room up on the ward. He cried non-stop in my arms for 20 hours. It was horrible. After 24 hours, it was decided that he would have nasogastric tube inserted so that he could feed. He was also given oxygen in little tubes and then progressed to high flow oxygen. He could barely keep any food down. It was really scary to see him. He would vomit and um, get quite distressed by all the monitoring. There was nothing I could do. I just was able to stroke him and 
and try and calm him because I couldn't even pick him up from all the monitoring and tubes. He was one of the lucky ones. His stay was pretty short. It was only seven days and from our room there were actually three babies that were admitted to the intensive care unit. It was horrible. A year on, I clearly remember the experience. In many ways, I think it actually altered his personality. He became, and still is, a very needy baby. I felt helpless. It was awful. Um, I knew he was getting better, but all I had to do was write it out. I was informed about the study through my midwife at a routine pregnancy appointment. My pregnancy and due date ticked all of the boxes, so my name was put forward as a possible candidate for the study. Once I found out what this study involved, I wanted to find out a bit more information. A family member's niece suffered from bronchiolitis as an infant. Prior to taking part in the study, I actually had no idea how serious RSV could be. I was slightly hesitant at first, but the nurse involved in the recruitment for the study was very knowledgeable and was able to provide me with lots of information about previous studies that had already taken place in other countries around the world. It's been a fantastic experience. The doctor and nurses involved in the study have been with us at every appointment. Even my toddler has been really excited to see Dr Tanya and Nurse Rachel at every appointment. I would absolutely recommend this study to our friends and family. I've taken a few pictures along the way, so in the future I can show my future generation that we were part of a groundbreaking study. Hopefully, in the future, the vaccine will become part of the schedule for babies and children. The best part about participating in this study for me is knowing that in the future, this vaccine can possibly save a child's life.